بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله نبينا محمد النبي الأمين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Today inshallah we are going to talk about المريض someone who is sick what to do in the month of Ramadan and then if we have time inshallah we're gonna go to the next point which is the musafir someone who is traveling in Ramadan what to do with his fasting Number one, al-marid, someone who's sick. Uh, we have to know that we have two types of sickness as for, uh, in terms of fasting. You have the temporary sickness or illness, someone who is temporarily ill, and inshallah, after a short period of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cure that person and that person will recover. An example, someone who has, uh, let's say someone who has a very bad cold, such person, we cannot tell them you have to fast. They can break their fast. Someone, well, uh, as in this pandemic, someone who has coronavirus, would we tell that person he has to fast? No, he doesn't have to fast. He has to focus on recovering. When he recovers, inshallah, after Ramadan, he can make up all of the days he missed in Ramadan. In any type of short sickness, when someone is sick and they're not able to fast, because they are sick so inshallah after Ramadan they can make up the days they did miss in Ramadan so for example let's say the beginning of Ramadan the person was well and feeling okay and then maybe by the fifth of Ramadan all the way to the tenth of Ramadan he was not feeling okay and he did not fast from the fifth to the tenth that's a total of six days so then after Ramadan he has to make sure that he fasts a total of six days as a replacement for the six days that he missed in the month of Ramadan inshallah and that's easy and very importantly, uh, because a lot of times could uh, people argue. So let's say someone has headache. What type of sickness that is allowed for you to break your fast? Uh, what type of sickness? Is it certain sicknesses, certain illnesses? No, it's up to you. How are you feeling? I could have just headache. But the headache is so severe. I'm not able to, 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 to focus, I'm not able, I need to eat, I want to recover, I want to feel okay, I have to take medication. So break your fast, it's headache, but it's severe on me. Because the most important thing to me now is just to uh, supply my body with the proper nutrition and the proper, inshallah, liquid, so my immune system will to work hard to fight that sickness and that illness that I'm feeling. So go ahead and break your fast, and then after Ramadan you can make up the days you missed. It's easy and simple. But we don't have any guidelines saying uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, example of sickness. If you have them, you can break your fast. No, whenever you feel ill, regardless of what type of sickness you're feeling, as long as your body needs to rest, break your fast. And then after Ramadan, you can make up the days you miss it. That's easy. In the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's when we're talking about short sickness. Someone who has long time condition, lifetime condition. Let's say someone who has cancer. Well, a'adu billah. He has to be on medication. In the fasting, weaken his body. He feels very weak when he fasts. Someone who has diabetes, and we have different degrees, degrees of the diabetes, but someone who has a very, his condition is very serious. And the doctors have been telling him, don't fast because that affects your health. Such person has a um, long life uh, condition. So such person, even after Ramadan, he is still going to be sick. So that person cannot make up the days he missed Ramadan. What does he have to do? He has to do the fidya, the it'am. He has to feed one person per day in Ramadan. So if Ramadan is 30 days, he has to feed 30 needy people. If Ramadan is 29 days, he has to feed 29 needy people. How do you do that feeding? How do you do that fidya? Um, uh, you could give any grain that people eat in your country. It has to be, uh, <clears throat> it has to be nusfa sa'a, half of a sa'a, and that equals to one and a half uh, kilograms, and it's three and a half pounds. Three and a half pounds of, for example, rice. That what you have to give per person. So, you gotta, um, you gotta find out how many days you have in Ramadan. Sometimes we have 29 days, sometimes we have at 30 days. So if we have 30 days, that's 30 needy people. So each person has to get one and a half kilogram or um, uh, six, uh, three, three, three pounds and a half of rice, for example. 
you can do one thing, which is what uh, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu arda, he used to do when he got extremely older or older, he was so old. And when he passed away, he was like 90, 90, 94 years old and he was not able to fast. So he was breaking his fast and eating so he can support his body to be stronger and to be able to survive and to live. So what he used to do is that he used to cook food and then invite 30 needy people. They come over, they eat, and that's the ita'am, and that's the fidya. And this way he has given um, the fidya for the days, for the 30 days of Ramadan. You can do it that way. And you can have um, rice in bags or you can have one meal. Rice with maybe some meat in it and give it. Um, give it to uh, 30 needy people and this way you have done the it'am properly in this way inshallah you are rewarded by Allah wa ta'ala so it's easy uh, can you do that in your home country do you have to do it in your local place in America no you can do it anywhere and most of the time people in our Muslim countries they are in more in need of that because there is so much poverty so let's say I'm from whatever country I'm, I'm from I want to send the money to my brother my brother uh, on behalf of me do that for me that's okay not a problem send the money and your brother has to make sure that he gives uh, let's say rice uh, one kilo one, one, one and a half kilo kilograms for each person uh, uh, according to the number of days in Ramadan 29 days or 30 days uh, in Ramadan inshallah that's easy to do anywhere so it does not necessarily to be in your local place you can send it to your home country and that's acceptable Insha'Allah, uh, you can do the, uh, you can break your fast if you are sick. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran made it clear. Anyone who is sick or traveling. When you're sick or traveling, break your fast and then in later days after Ramadan, make up the days you missed in Ramadan. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah in the Quran. Okay, someone who has the fear of, uh, he's afraid to get sick like the situation we are in now because of coronavirus should i say because i'm afraid if i if i fast i may get coronavirus that's not true and that's not what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant allah never said in the quran if you are in, in in fear of getting sick so break your fast he didn't say that when you are sick when your situation is that you are sick someone who has a coronavirus that person can break his fast until he completely recovers and then he can make up the days of Ramadan after Ramadan in later days. But someone who is healthy, Alhamdulillah, you don't have the coronavirus, so you have to fast, inshallah. No one can cancel the fasting. The fasting is mandatory and wajib upon us and no one can make that now wajib upon you except if you're not able to fast, you are sick. But if you're healthy, but you just have fear, if you fast, you're going to get sick, which is not true, inshallah, the fasting makes you stronger. The fasting makes your immune system to rest. The fasting is good for you. And read about the fasting and the benefit of fasting. You're going to find a lot of uh, benefit of fasting uh, uh, on top of the ajr. The reward you get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on top of that, you have a lot of benefit that you get from that fasting, inshallah. Now we're going to go to the someone who is traveling. When you travel, when you travel, it's hard to be traveling and fasting. It's hard. Even if you're traveling on the plane, it's still hard to be fasting. You need some uh, food and some calories in your system so you can support yourself to be able to make it to your destination. So it's allowed for you, as Allah said, whoever is sick or traveling, you make up uh, these days that you are traveling after Ramadan, mean that you break your fast. But when we read the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, we see different things. We see a hadith, the Prophet is fasting in the uh, in his traveling and then we have the hadith the prophet saying it's not righteousness to fast in the uh, traveling so we have the hadith in Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari an Abu Darda radiyallahu anhu he said kharajna ma'a nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ba'd asfarihi fi yawmin haar hatta kan ahaduna yada'u yadahu ala ra'sihi min shiddat al-har wa ma kana fina sa'imun illa rasool Allah wa ibn rawaha that one day we were traveling with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu arda narrated. And it was hot, extremely hot, to the extent that one of us puts his hands on his head to cover his head from the sun. It's extremely hot. And no one is fasting except two people. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abdullah ibn Rawah. 
And then we have other hadith. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, لَيْسَ مِنَ الْبِرِّ الصِّيَامُ فِي السَّفَرِ It's not righteousness to fast when you're traveling. You should break your fast. So what does that mean? So what it means is that although it is permissible for you to break your fast when you're traveling, but if someone said, no, I don't want to break my fast, I want to fast even though I'm traveling. Can we say he's sinful? He's not sinful. His fasting is acceptable, but the best thing to do is not to fast. Okay, in that one incident, the Prophet was fasting. The Prophet's, mashallah, is very strong. Uh, Abdullah ibn Rawaha also uh, is very strong. And also they have uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi has the best iman. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa also supported by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is now like any other human. And Abdullah ibn Rawaha, mashallah, also he was strong too. And they did that, but majority of the Sahaba were not able to fast. They were putting his hands on their heads because it's extremely hot. So the best thing to do is not to fast when you're traveling, even if you're traveling by plane, even if you're traveling, um, let's say um, you're traveling in, in, in VIP class, you're gonna have a bed, you're gonna have all kind of, um, uh, you're gonna have the, the best the best service in, in, on the plane still. You traveling, so you better break your fast. That's it. Laysa min al-birr siyam of safar. It's not righteousness to uh, fast in the traveling. Just break your fast. Whenever you finish your traveling after Ramadan, inshallah, these days you missed, you can make them up and replace them with fasting other days after Ramadan. In this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the exact reward as you fasted in Ramadan because you break your fast for a valid reason that's mentioned in the Quran, safar. Allah said it clearly, if you travel and don't fast, and then make it up after Ramadan, Allah will give you the same exact ajr. And same thing when you are sick, don't say, oh, uh, I'm sick, but I'm still feeling a little, okay, I'm, I'm going to, to fast. No, don't force yourself, don't kill yourself. Do not take yourself to the, uh, to, to, to the harm. Don't, don't do that. You feel feeling sick, break your fast after Ramadan, you can make it up. And also those who have serious conditions, some people, uh, they have uh, diabetes, and it's very critical. And the doctor's been telling them, do not fast, it's so dangerous on you. You have to break your fast. You have to take your medication, everything. But they do not, um, they don't follow that advice uh, saying that the doctor is not Muslim. The doctor doesn't have to be Muslim. The doctor is advising you about your health. And the doctor, he doesn't have to be a Muslim to know about your health. He knows what's good for you, he's advising you. So take that advice, break your fast, and do not fast. That's better for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the rukhsah, given you the permission in the Quran. Don't fast. And you're gonna get the ajr. Even if you have long life condition, you just doing the fidya, you feed him, you're gonna get the ajr as exactly as someone who is fasting. Because you did not break your fast uh, for no reason. Something that's out of your control. I'm sick and I'm not able to fast. And Allah knows my knee. I'm gonna get the exact ajr as someone who's healthy and fasted Ramadan from the beginning to the end, inshallah. Ah, uh, past 10 minutes. Anyway, this is the end of our lecture. Inshallah, tomorrow we're gonna have the khutbah at 1.15 p.m. And then uh, the, the, the lecture for the fasting, we're not gonna have that tomorrow. We're gonna have the lecture for the fasting on Saturday. Inshallah, so see you tomorrow, inshallah, at 1.15 p.m. for the khutbah. Jazakumullahu khayran wa baraka feekum wa sallillahum wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad.